Baby. Hello, Waxers, and welcome to Waxing the Record Mind and Dutt. I'm your host, Mind, and my colleague has become his dad. It's Mr. Neil Dutton. How are we, Neil? Deep down, it happens to us all. It does, but like, you know, side by side, you know, I mean, he's funnier, but apart from that, then, you know, you know, identical looking is, is, is actually happening here. I, I, I say, it's, it's not as if I didn't look like him anyway, I just had more hair. So, More hair than you weren't regu- a regular glasses wearer, of which your dad was both. And now you've got a skinhead and glasses and, you know, the transformation is complete. The different, a major difference there is I shave my hair because it's cheaper. I get more, you know, I, I can, if I shave it myself, I can literally get five weeks before I have to do it again. He didn't have a choice. He's just bald. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Touche. Touche. That's uh, going to stand up in court, I'm sure. Um, week eight of the NFL season, the final um, UK game, but international travel soon as they go to Munich, and so do me and Neil. This week, we're going to talk the fantasy implications of three big trades this week. Big in NFL sense, is not in you know the world. Um, can we fix Brady and Rodgers? And then we're going to talk about the game of the week, which if someone would have told me this was the game of the week and we hate it, would have thought they were insane. Then we'll go to fantasy, fancy darlings, fancy losers and, and fancy predictions bound to go wrong. And boy, oh boy, did they go wrong last week. Um, but without further ado, let's get on with the show and start with the main event. Time now for the main event. Neil, we're reaching that trade deadline, which most years is pretty crap. Um, if you compare it to all the US sports, especially and and UK soccer, um, but there's been three trades which have interest in the fantasy space. So I was interested to get your thoughts on them. In um, the first one, and I guess the main one that's happened recently on the offensive side of the ball is Christian McCaffrey to the Forty ers which happened post kind of our last show. So I'm interested in your thoughts on how. CMC to the 49ers affects his draft, Is sorry, his fantasy stock. Uh, it kills everyone uh, because we have a low volume offense that now has another mouth to feed. So the fact that he's going to be taking carries, presumably, that means we haven't got that upside for Debo Samuel. The fact he's going to be catching balls means that we're not going to have the impact for Debo as a receiver, maybe Kittle. Ayuk might be okay because he's an outside receiver. That's fine. But the one worry I have is whenever Kyle Shanahan has expended significant draft capital on a running back, they've flopped. Whenever one's just been landed with him, they've done well. Like Elijah Mitchell, he didn't want him. He wanted the first fella, but the first fella wasn't good enough. So he just, oh, well, I've got this fella. Hey, look what happened there. All this thing, you know, then they went Ty, uh, Ty, uh, Ty Davis Price didn't work out and he's, he's been hurt. So now we've given up what is the equivalent of a first round pick for Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I'm worried because, uh, you know, that's the move you make when you think you're a player away from the Super Bowl. They're not. And they've got no picks next year and a quarterback that they're going to have to make a decision on the fifth-year option at the end of it, who they have no clue what the hell he is. It's a worrying situation because, as I say, it just takes another piece of the pie away from everyone else on an offense that we think we should like for fantasy, but actually it's an absolute minefield. It's interesting, right, because obviously I think you're right, you know, in the in the in the playground school version of I'm sick and tired of getting beaten by that lad. And Kyle Shanahan goes ahead and wins a wins a um, a trade off with with Sean McVay. Ironic, really, as he beats him every year playing football. Um, it does seem like an all in play. I'm not hundred percent sure it's all in for this year. And I think they've got two years to make it all in based on kind of contracts and stuff. I think you're right on McCaffrey. I think you're right on um, 
lance so you know fancy or whatever yeah i mean if anyone's trying to play games on the on the shenanigans whether it be mike or kyle good luck to you um how long have we been doing this we've been doing this show for 10 10 years now we've been doing what fancy nfl for what 15 like if you've if you've tried to ride your wagon with it with a kyle shanahan or a mike shanahan running back up good luck it, it's been the same every time does he make them better on the field probably um is that great for fancy probably not i don't think it's something that you want to get involved in but you know Kyle doesn't care he never has and uh, he never will so we go from there um let's stay running back neil um the Jets, the Jets, literally five minutes after we created a, a WhatsApp group called Brees for our friend Mullen, tore his ACL. Um, I don't know if that's our problem or what. Literally five minutes. <laughs> not, not, not even kidding. Um, they have tried to improve their running back room by signing your friend and favourite um, Twitter meme Jim Robinson from the Jaguars. How does he improve the Jets, or does he at all? Well, you know, everybody needs good neighbours, as yes. we know. James Robinson was not playing well for the Jaguars. His stats, stat lines were iffy, and he... I know you can't say, you know, take away the big runs, and he was shit. Uh, you know, he, he had an awful lot of very ordinary production, spiked with some big plays, but in the last few weeks, they scaled down and he seems to have lost a lot of a bit of burst, a bit of explosiveness. He tore his Achilles. He shouldn't be playing football. I'm not blaming him for that. That's an injury that we're still... We, we've ACL now seems to be a... No, we're over that. You get an ACL, that's fine. You can be back this season. We seem to have conquered the ACL. The Achilles, that's the latest one that's... No, you're still going to show me you've got it. And very few people look like they have. He's not going to the New York Jets to take the job. He's not going to be as good as Brees Hall because we saw was having an excellent season. So, but he's going to be in the, one of these annoying timeshares with Michael Carter and himself, and they'll probably mix in some of the clown as well because it's what they do. Maybe it means they have to throw the ball more, which I don't think the Jets want to do because they don't trust Zach Wilson. So, I don't think Robinson's going to be a massive upgrade on Brees Hall because he's certainly not. He's more likely to be a very large downgrade and probably cap Michael Carter's fantasy ceiling. In terms of the James Robertson deal, I think the only person who benefits from it is Travis Etienne. Um, I think, you know, the the last seven weeks have shown that, you know, terrible coach Urban Meyer was, but that was actually a, a, a... a reasonably decent draft pick who they can get some value on. Terrible position to take him, but a good player to have. I think someone like Doug Peterson can use a player like that. I mean, you've had a billion of those players. The only thing Travis needs to remember is the how to catch the ball. Because if he remembers how to catch the ball, he could be in serious business. It's weird because it's like they've tried to get rid of James Robinson for two solid years. For a multitude of different reasons, um, the Jets need as many players as possible to have the ball, so Zach Wilson doesn't because he's not the answer, um, and it's 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 depressing really for Jets fans. I'm sure that you've had two goes at the number two pick in the NFL draft, and you've failed miserably twice. But yeah, uh, James Robinson will probably help them. Um, really interesting, weird good slash rubbish football game between the Jets and the Patriots this week after that whatever that was against the Bears for the Patriots yeah it should be a good game but in terms of Robinson he had some value but I don't think you'd play him in your fancy team the weird thing is the Jets want to establish the run but get their plays off quickly I think they're like fourth in pace of play the Patriots want to establish the run but a 30th in pace of play so it's like this game could be finished by half five, or it could go on till half twelve. You know, it, but the score it'll still be three nil. So it's it's a weird one. Travis Etienne, though, as you say, yeah, 
if you're supposed to be this all-purpose back, you're now settling into an 80% snap share. Catch the bloody ball. That's all we're asking. Five targets last week. Caught one of them for five yards. Thanks, mate. That's all we're asking. Um, Final one. Um, Kadarius Tony goes from the New York Football Giants to the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, to say that's a different atmosphere from for a wide receiver is probably the understatement of the millennia. Brian Dable is an excellent offensive coach, obviously. Um, but yeah, um, Tony, who has been struggling for, with a hamstring injury for about 26, uh, 26 games now, I assume will be 100% fit going forward. The problem we have is, as great an offensive mind as he is, and he has been, for two different teams with a multitude of different quarterbacks. The only wide receivers who produce for Andy Reid are special ones. So Terrell Owens, Deshaun Jackson, Tyreek Hill. So as exciting as this is that we've gone to this you know, this fertile ground where fantasy points, you know, can be found everywhere. Unless Kadarius Tony is truly special, he's not gonna give us anything. Because he's not Tyreek Hill. He's not you know, he's not Deshaun Jackson, and he's certainly not Terrell Owens. So they've got this w- wonderful, you know, build-up of OK wide receivers. But how many of them do you trust in fantasy at the moment? Juju's had two good games back-to-back. I'm not wowed. Sky Moore, well, you know, I, I never trust a wide receiver who wears 24. <laughs> when 10 was available. I mean, I hate I hate the, t- uh, the, the, the teens for wide receivers, but I'll let you have it. You chose 24, you can't handle punts. Um, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, well, I think we all know what he is. You're not Tyree Hill. So this offense will just go tickety-boo. It'll go through Kelsey and everyone else can chip in. So I'm not wowed by Tony. I know, I mean, the best game Kadarius Tony's played in the NFL, he got ejected from. So as good as it was, he got ejected from it. There are attitude and application issues at play here. Is it, you know, at the end of the day, he's... He's, you know, he needs a fresh start. The Giants needed rid of him. This helps everyone, but I don't think it helps fantasy yet. No, I don't think it helps fantasy yet. Um, I mean, yeah, attitude and, and other concerns abound. Yeah, weirdly, right up, right up Andy Reid's street. Um, he's not Terrell Owens, far from it. But you know, I don't think T- Terrell was very happy in San Francisco towards the end. Um, this guy is the most talented of the wide receivers they have got. Can they get the talent out of him? To be seen. Um, the Giants never did, and the Giants couldn't be asked with all the hassle that comes around with them. Will this be a kick up the backside that helps him? You hope so, because he seems to have all the talent in the world. But if he doesn't fix it, then they got a problem on their hands. Neil, we're recording this on Friday. Uh, well, later than usual, um, because um, it was my son's 15th birthday, which makes me feel very old, but anyway. Um, so last night, so we got to watch Thursday Night Football, which we don't usually do, and we don't usually talk about Thursday Night Football, but we can talk about it, and we can talk about it in the context of Tom Brady um, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then obviously, when you talk about Tom Brady now, he feels like he's linked to Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Um, both teams are a mess right now, um, especially on offense. Um, although, to be fair to Tom Brady, Mike Evans, and the like, I'm not sure they were giving up 200 yards on the ground in the second in the second half. But I digress. Brady, I I, I text you seem to have four balls battered down, and I don't remember ever seeing him one have one battered down before. Um, Adam Rogers didn't complete a third down against the Washington Commanders, not the 2000 Baltimore Ravens. It's a team that has no secondary whatsoever and hasn't had the secondary, I don't know, since about 2005. Is this the end of the line for these guys? And if it's not, what needs to change to stop it being the end of the line? We are mere days away from the trade deadline. We've seen teams like this, if they try and make a trade to bring players in, very rarely, does, it's not a magic touch. So the trade deadline is for teams who are needing a piece to just take them over the hump. 
this is not two teams that just need a little bit of help going over the hump. This is two broken teams. Brady, th- this was the season that I think, in our deepest heart of hearts, we didn't want to see from Tom Brady at the end. We wanted, you know, as much as you know, we, as much as we were saying, just you know, win one and piss off, you know, as much as we wanted rid of him. As a football fan, I didn't want to look back on a final season and say this sucks. What did you come back? For? You came back for this, and it just seems that everything about him and the books since the end of the twenty twenty one season has been weird. You know, the retirement, Bruce Arians moving upstairs, the unretirement, the taking the time off in training camp, the taking Wednesdays off during the season, the flying out to Robert Kraft's funeral. Obviously, what's going on is personal life. Not a yeah, wedding. Sorry, yeah. Um, sorry, Robert. You know, I'm, I know you're listening. What's going on in his personal life is none of our concern, and I'm quite frankly sick of hearing about it. Announcers, he's getting divorced. Move on. You don't need to mention it again in the same game. If if his divorce is why he's not completing passes to Mike Evans, I'd be stunned. No, but I think I think I'm going to call Crush you Neil because I. I do actually disagree with you, and I'll explain why. All of those things, his personal life, his taking time off from training camp, his going to Robert Kraft's wedding, showed him, and then you watch the field. The team are out of sync. There's almost a lack of focus. And I don't mean that, like, there's no focus. I mean that Tom Brady's focus was 100% at all times. And at the moment, it's 94. Mm. And he's missing plays with Mike Evans that he's never missed before while Mike Evans has been there. And there are reasons for that, which are two weeks missing of training camp or not playing all practices or going through personal issues which, unfortunately, I'm aware of and can take control of things going on in your life, right? So we're not saying that he he doesn't he's not um, he's not an amazing player. What I'm saying is, if this is a game when you are his age, that you need to have laser focus on, and at the moment. I think it's just off a little bit. And that off a little bit is a mile because there were some throws there that he made that I thought were great. You know, he made some great plays. But then there was others and you're like, why is Mike Evans three yards away from that ball? It's just bizarre. I mean, if we go on to Rodgers, I, I just don't think... He, I don't think he wants to be there. Like, no. I, don't, I don't think he wants to... I heard... I, 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 I was just listening to the Ringer pod with um, Danny Heifert, um, Ben Solach and, and Stephen Ruiz. And Stephen Ruiz described um, Aaron Rodgers as a petulant teenager in the way that he plays. Like, you know, just, oh, well, you know, oh, this is rubbish. You know, like, he went on Pat McAfee's show and said that, and he's on Pat McAfee's show every week, so, and like, this is not a distraction thing. He just said that, um, you know, people who are not making plays should be benched. Like, I watched that game, he should be benched. Did you hear what his follow-up to that was? Mm, well, that's, what oh. I'm saying to, that's what I'm saying to the lads in private as well, so it's it's not a distraction. How about encourage them? If they're not on the same page as you, get them on it. He would be, the- he'd be... He's an awful teammate. Absolutely awful teammate. Yeah. I mean... This is the thing that, you know, if we... These two, for some reason, I say now, Brady and Rogers are, for some reason, linked. And I think it's probably because they're on the downward slope at the same time. Matt Kelly always used to say, look at all the people who want to come and play for Tom with Tom Brady. You know, Gronk came out in retirement. Antonio Brown, which I'm sure he's regretting, he got him there to Tampa. You know, Leonard Fournette came to Tampa. LeSean McCoy went to Tampa. Were all these people queuing up to go and play with Aaron Rodgers? No. Because, you know, we've seen, like, again, i back to someone that Matt Kelly will tell as well, Jeff Janis ran the wrong route once. 
So Aaron Rodgers buried him. Never threw to him. Made sure he never got a chance to carve out an NFL career. He's a petulant tit who, if you're not, you know, in the circle of trust, I don't think I'd want to be. You know, it's one of those things that, yeah, yeah, obviously you get the ball as much, but Devontae Adams said, I can't be doing with worrying, is he going to play, is he going to go? I'd rather go play with my mate. Yeah, and get paid less play. money. Yeah. yeah and now, just... the, the, now the Green Bay Packers are on the hook for somewhere in the region of $50 million next year for a malcontent who doesn't like throwing to any of the people who they've got on the roster. Yeah, and the, it's one of those as well that I've always subscribed to what Daniel Jeremiah said is the quarterback's mantra, which is, if we win, it's we. If we lose, it's me. Aaron Rodgers has conceded at least once in the last three weeks. Maybe I need to play a tick better. A tick. What tape are you watching? Because I'm watching you and you're, shit. you're playing shit, mate. Yeah, I know the line isn't great. I know your receivers aren't great. You're not running the ball. Stop blaming the motion. I mean, what the what the good goes some of the podcasts I've been listening to is I think it was Charles Robinson said this. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll run the offense you want to run, and then when it doesn't work, you say this is not this is your fault. You've blamed me. You've called me out. You said the system's too complicated. You hate all the motion. Fine. We'll run it the way you want it. If it works, you get all the credit. But when it doesn't, shut up and let me coach. Which is ironic because five years ago we hated Mike McCarthy's system because it was too simple. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, good luck to both of these players who I have a feeling won't be playing for their teams next year. I don't know why and how that won't happen, but let's see where we go. Let's go on to the game of the week, Neil. It's unbelievably... Giants at Seahawks. We don't do power rankings, but we do division previews. And I am pretty sure we said both of these teams were going to be um, what we have found as like, talked about by draft nicks. Um, right now, they're not going to be talked about by draft nicks, which is interesting. A um, couple of questions on the game, Neil. First of all, we've waited a long time for this. And we're finally getting it. And we're not New York Giants fans, far from it. But it is great to see the best of Saquon Barkley. Yeah, he's exciting. You know, he's 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 running with purpose. He looks elusive. He's doing everything. You know, he's catching the ball. He's making plays up the backfield. You know, as a runner and a receiver. It's great to see. This is the Saquon that was promised to us that was lost for two years because of injuries. It's great to see. I still do not understand how him being so good, however, propels this roster. But but it does. And it's, you know, we've always said bad coaching can hurt a team more than good coaching can improve it. Brian Dable is throwing that in our face and saying, really? So I'm just doing an OK job, am I, with the same crap talent that they had last year and couldn't win a, you know, couldn't win a, couldn't win a raffle. So Saquon's playing amazing. Everyone else is contributing. It's tough to say that, yeah, but every game they win, it's a fourth quarter comeback. They can't keep doing this, but they have. And it's been for seven weeks. You can't fluke it all the time. Yes, they might start losing a couple of one-score games or maybe not be able to make the comeback, but this is a team that, if you're up on them, put them away. It's not done at half-time. Put them away. Do not give them a chance to... If they can just say, look, we'll just do our game, We'll make back into it. You'll start making mistakes. They've shown they can. If you're up by 10 on them at half time, go for 40. Put them away. They're not that good. You're making yourselves look stupid by this team being, I think it's 65% chance of making the playoffs. They, it's, they, it's, they play, they, they're 6 and 1 now. They played Washington twice and the Colts. Yeah. Like that, that, that should be nine wins. Like, just then pluck another victory out of the sky, which, you know, we could go through the, the schedule, do you know what I mean? But and the thing make... that might help them, you know, I'm saying, you know, touching wood here, week 18, the Eagles might already be in the playoffs. Correct. So they're going to, I don't think they're going to put a full strength team out in week 18 well. against the Giants. That that depends on that depends on records, Neil, obviously, and, yeah. and you know. But but I, I I agree with you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, let's move on to the the Seahawks um, side of the ball. Um, 
How surprised are you by the Se- Seahawks offense? Uh, and unbelievably, isn't probably strong enough. I'm not hearing, seeing, or reading any hype or praise for Shane Waldron as a future mm. head coach. Mm. This is his offense being executed the way he wants to execute it by a quarterback who does as he's told. So maybe three was the problem because he wanted to play Russell Wilson football, not the system. Now, I'm not, I am not mea culpering this. I am not absolving Pete Carroll of five years of blame because this team did not go all in. This team was Arsenal. And also, you're a defensive coach. Your defense is shit. That's on you, Pete. I know some of the oh, some of the draft picks. You know the the rookie was it Tariq Wallen had four straight games with interception. That's great. You're still not stopping anyone. So, I'm not sorry, Pete. I'm just disappointed. You know. Uh, yeah. But as I say, for me, this is what the offense is supposed to do. They've they've unearthed the gem in Kenny Walker. He, you know, he he looks a good player. He looks a good running back. I look forward to them overpaying him in four years. But this offense is executing. The defense is not. Well, the, def- the defense is not, but it's done okay the last couple of weeks, which you would expect to get better during the season. They have done. They've they've dined out on draft picks from two thousand and ten. Um, and this year seem to have got four starters, two corners, and two tackles. They couldn't pick a tackle out of a lineup for fifteen years, and somehow managed to get two in one draft. Geno Smith's been unbelievable. Anybody who even remotely said, you know, Greg Rosenthal and Stephen Ruiz, biggest fans of 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 Geno Smith did not see this coming. I don't care what he said. They they thought he was a starter in the NFL. He didn't think he was a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Um, DK Metcalf's a, a big miss, but you know, they turned Marquise Goodwin into some kind of superstar last week. Can they do it again? Maybe. Um, I'm made up for Pete because I like him a lot and always have. Um, you, I understand, and I have baited you all week via multiple different tweets of whether you were going to apologise on the pod. I never expected you to because you shouldn't, because you're right. Um, I think what what you write in terms of thinking, you you write in terms of thinking that they, they never were all in and could have done better. But I'm not sure they could have now because now I look at Russell Wilson and I think was you know Pete holding him up not holding them back, um, which is unbelievable uh, because I think most people thought this team would be hot garbage this year and we both thought that. Like, So it's not, this is not a thing for us, but maybe, just maybe, and hear me out here, Pete Carroll is a very good football coach, a motivator of men who will listen to him um, and we joke regularly, literally about five minutes ago, about how no one likes Aaron Rodgers. No one likes no one likes Russell Wilson. I do not know why. Now, is he a bit false and whatever? I spoke to George Somerville who do uh, to stand up code at UK Art, the SEC guru, one man to listen to on SEC football in the UK. And he's in London at the moment. He's been doing the press conferences and he I went cause after the Russell Wilson Eight hours doing wind sprints or whatever he was doing on the plane. I was like, what? this dude, this dude is a dickhead. What an asshole! <laughs> and George was like, I've just spoken to him. He seems like a lovely guy. And I think he does seem like a lovely guy, but I'm completely convinced that it's false. And I don't know of a team that won a Super Bowl, went to another one, won so many games. And absolutely despises someone who everybody else in the world believed was integral to that team. They absolutely hate him. There's got to be something in that. I think it's one of those that when when they were winning, and you know it wasn't as much negative publicity. It was the we mocked the this this water prevents concussions. This water like, prevents concussions. Like, no, no, Ross, no. And then I said he just got more and more. And then it was you know these are the three teams I trade for. 
I'd trade too. Oh, but I don't want to trade. Okay, then why say it? And then there was, oh, I rehabbed my finger for 19 hours a day. You're a liar or a lunatic or both. And then this on the tra- on the plane, seriously, as I, as I said to Ben Isaacs on Twitter, I'd be, stewardess, can you open the door, please? I'm getting out. I, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, Sir, we're at 25,000 feet. I'll take my chances. It's crazy. maniac. Crazy, crazy. Let us get on with the show, Neil. Let us go to the fancy portion and let's start with Fancy Darling. Hello, darling. Neil, uh, last week uh, you were 1-1, one and one, overall 5-9. and nine. You picked Jimmy G, um, who was actually quarterback 9 last week, 17.3 points, 303 yards and two scores, which doesn't really tally with the fact his team got absolutely boat raced by the Kansas City Chiefs but who cares it's fancy and we're not bothered if you logically picked Robert Tonyan from the Green Bay Packers as someone who should do really well against the commies he didn't he was tight end 21 3.2 points that's a loss 5 and 9 overall and the away we go this week can you give us your first one please well the first one is in the game of the week and it's Daniel Jones I mean obviously there's you know Patrick Mahomes is on on a bye this week so you're losing major quarterback I know I am in the Scott Fishbowl I also lost Jamar Chase it's going well this week um, Daniel Jones is the quarterback nine in fantasy football this season he accounted for over 300 yards himself last week with their uh, passing and rushing uh, he has the third most rushing yards among all quarterbacks and he's averaging nearly 50 yards per game on the ground the Seahawks have allowed the ninth most fancy points to quarterbacks this season while allowing the seventh most rushing yards to the position so if we think the Giants are going to play as they've been playing, that's good news for Daniel Jones, and he's an excellent streaming option at the position this week. Who's your second pick, Neil? There are only a few things in life that you we know for certain. Uh, we know we're born. We know we'll pay taxes. We know we'll make questionable fashion decisions along the way. And we know we start tight ends in fancy football when they're playing the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, so that means Irv Smith comes into the streaming conversation this week. The Cardinals have allowed the most catches, receiving yards and touchdowns to tight ends this season. Irv Smith hasn't been dominant this season by any stretch of the imagination, but he has seen a 15% target share in the Vikings passing game. I think it's never gone above 18, but it's never dropped below 12. So while he's not going to dominate the targets because they still have this Jefferson guy, I think he'll see enough and in enough high-value opportunities to make him a worthwhile streamer this week. I am seriously intrigued by the Minnesota Arizona game. It's got all the makings of a cake apocalypse. Five and one at home. Let's show we're a good team. Off a bye. It's got all the makings of a cake apocalypse, I'm telling you. Anyway, let's get on and let's get on to Neil's fancy loser. Neil lost his fancy loser as he picked DJ Moore. Now, DJ Moore has been in wide receiver purgatory for about two years, if not longer. Last week he went to PJ Walker and somehow became wide receiver 10 and got 12.6.7 catches, 69 yards and a score. So that's obviously a loss, makes Neil 3 and 4 overall. But it's just completely and utterly mind blowing. Um, but anyway, who you got this week, Neil? This week, I'm saying you're probably going to have to start him because obviously he has produced, he has been good this season, and you, you don't want to start benching your studs. But I don't think Nick Chubb will finish in the top ten in running backs this week. He might not even finish in the top twelve, so he might not be a running back one. The Bengals are not bad against fantasy running backs and you know there's a good chance that even without Jamar Chase this could turn into you know an air war and I don't think the Browns can compete in an air war with the Bengals and if even if they do Nick Chubb's not coming in and taking the receptions for that that's that's Kareem Hunt's gig that's Kareem Hunt, yeah. so I'm not convinced Nick Chubb is going to be a big winner this week as someone who's who's hoping for not needing Nick Chubb on Monday night in his in his uh, dynasty league, uh, I'm hopeful that you're wrong, but we shall see. 
And Neil, let's get on. Uh, final one and give us your fancy predictions, bound to go wrong. I mean, we suck at this, right? Let's be honest. I don't think we do. We, 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 this well, we've is got supposed it. to be. This is not a. We've sat down. We've done the research. We've crunched the numbers, and this is what we've come up with. It's called bold, and we no, are true. bold. True, but you said the TMC would get forty-eight touches for the Carolina Panthers. He didn't even play for the Carolina Panthers. He played for the San Francisco 49ers and got 10 touches. I said, I said the Sun God, Amon Ra St. Brown, I will eventually get that right, would be a top three wide receiver. I watched, that, I watched the first play of that game and thought, ooh, that doesn't look good. And he never came back. Football I go for it. I go first this week. Um, let's stay with the Detroit Lions, but on the other side of the ball. Do you want PFF, the highest rated wide receiver is Tyreek Hill. He will go up against the corner for the Detroit Lions, who is the worst rated corner in the NFL at the moment for the Detroit Lions in the whole league. Oof. I believe Jalen Waddle and Tyree Hill will both score over 150 yards and one touchdown. Which is great, apart from the fact in our dynasty league, I'm playing Simon, and no one will know who Simon is, but what you should know about Simon is, Simon is a massive Miami Dolphins fan, and therefore his team's flipping riddled with with Miami Dolphins. So I think I'm going against Tua and Waddle this week, so I could be in serious bother. Hashtag pray for mind. Give us your pick, please, mate. Running back one overall this week will be Tony Pollard. Ezekiel Elliott is doubtful. There's no reason to play him. They are massive favourites against the Bears. Unleash Pollard. Let's slip the dogs of war. And let's see what this offence can look like if they finally put it all on Pollard's back. Running back one overall. We are in a... We are... I mean, it won't happen because that would be bizarre, but we are close to being in a situation where the 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 Cowboys win, they would go to, what, 6-2? and two? Yeah. The Eagles win, they would go to 7-0. and oh. They're not extreme suggestions. By the way, both of those teams are favoured by over a touchdown. The New York Giants are playing... The Seahawks, which you talked about multiple times, toss-up game in my opinion. And Washington are playing Sam Ellinger and could be 4-4, four and four, which is bizarre. None of that will happen and Washington will lose, luckily. But yeah, the NFC East is back. It's 1985 all over again. Um, Neil, that's it for this week's show. Before we're back next week, what where can people listen, read on the internet and even read while holding a magazine please follow me on twitter at n13 see my stuff at number fire at rotavis a player profile and 44 football and also if you pick up this month's gridiron magazine you will see a little piece i wrote in there about trevor lawrence and also as well going back to the nfc east there's also an article in there from my colleague Mike Carlson about why the NFC East in the 80s was the best division in football he just names four head coaches and moves on I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, I'm at Mainzy7 combined with at waxing underscore lyrical um, if you like my voice <laughs> more fool you but I also host the touchdown review for the touchdown.co.uk this week myself Callum Thomas and Joe try and find out who are the seven playoff teams in the AFC and NFC it's pff, grim stuff um, and I also continue my quest for picks domination as I'm 10 and 3 which guarantees that I haven't put any money on gambling all year or for many years as if I was I would be rubbish so there you go that is it for this week enjoy your Friday evening enjoy your weekend when you're listening to this these top guys are out <laughs>